Hello, my name is Nathan Zimmerman and welcome to my Photoshop tutorial. This tutorial will be oriented around making this image that you see right here. Now, this space related image took me about an hour to make, so, uh, and this is only going to be around a 20 minute video, hopefully, so I might go a little bit fast and I'll be cutting a lot, a lot of corners, but hopefully in the end we'll come up with something that looks like this. So now the first step in any space related image is we need to get some type of base for the planet or planets plural that we're gonna have. Now as you can see in this case we only have one so that makes things a great uh, deal more simple. Now for textures you're gonna wanna start with a very high resolution. This will give you the best overall quality result because you can then shrink this texture down to the size of the planet in the image there and this is about, I don't know, maybe 10 times as large. I have it at 5,000 by 5,000. And now there's also a lot of methods you could go about um, making your texture. We're going to use uh, just satellite photos and a little bit of manipulation. Uh, if you had some real talent and a, <laughs> a whole lot of time you could go about painting these textures but for the sake of simplicity, we're just going to um, do it the easy way. So I'm going to go to google.com. I'm going to Google Visible NASA. Now, this is a website that has some excellent stock photos on it and you can use these to uh, work with your texture. As you can see I already had a few pre-selected. Um, these are all stormish type images and I thought they might make an interesting planet texture so let's use them. So yeah just search Visible NASA. Um, they have all sorts of um, ca categories for excellent quality images and alright so just paste your first image into your um, canvas and grab another one can't decide where I want this I can see how quick this is um, when you have this high resolution of textures you really don't need to do that much combining which at the end of the day makes it a lot simpler for us Gonna flip that texture there. All right. Now you may be thinking that's one ugly planet texture. However, luckily Photoshop can do most of the work for us when it comes to blending these layers. So let's give that a try. I'm gonna go to Edit and then auto blend layers and as you can see this is one large image so it's taking quite a bit of time now <laughs> that was an attempt to auto blend all the layers and personally I don't like it very much so I'm going to hit control alt z get rid of that and I'm going to do them one at a time so I'm going to highlight this layer, I'm going to hold down the control key and select the next layer. I'm going to go to edit, auto blend layers. Alright, now that's much more acceptable. I'm going to hit control E, which will merge the two layers. Then I'm going to hit control and select the next layer. 
and I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go to Edit, Auto Blend Layers. All right, looking good. I'm going to hit Control E to merge layers. Select the next layer, Edit, and Auto Blend Layers. All right something with that image up there is not doing so well with the auto blend I wonder why that is pardon me as I tinker around a bit here Alright, let's try auto blending them again. Edit, auto blend layers, and there we go. Much better blending. I'm going to merge them and grab the next one. Now if you look closely, some of this really doesn't make any sense, but remember we're going to be shrinking this texture quite a great deal. And so while this has done a fairly good job at blending the layers, it's still definitely not perfect. Alright, good enough. So now, why don't we go about getting the actual circular texture itself. I'm going to hold my mouse down on the rectangular marquee tool and select the elliptical tool. I'm going to hold shift to get a perfect circle. And I'm going to select what I think would be a good selection for a texture. I'm going to copy paste. Now let's get rid of that huge background so we can see what we're working with. All right, here's the start of our planet texture. Now we just gotta make it look like a planet and right now it's pretty flat. We're gonna use a filter and then go to, let's see, what is it? Distort and try to make it look a lot more like a sphere so Use this filter right here. Spheres eyes, spherical eyes, something. I don't know how you pronounce it. And use a hundred the first time and fifty the second. And there you go. You got a much bigger, bulgy looking possible uh, sphere. Now this is a gigantic sphere we're definitely not going to be able to use something this big in our piece so why don't we shrink it down quite a bit and then we can start working with it all right let's zoom in and see what we got all right not bad at all you can barely tell that these textures were just blended together Huh, and still a little bit too big, so I'm going to shrink it even some more so I can see it with my full screen when I'm zoomed in 100%. Alright, I'm hitting Control Plus and Control Minus to control the zooms, and here we are. Next thing to do would be to create the atmosphere of the planet. So I'm going to hold down the Control key, and I'm going to click on the layer. And this gives me a nice selection of the entire planet. I'm going to make a new layer. And I'm going to fill it with black. 
Next, I'm going to set it to screen so black goes away. And now I'm going to start adding some atmosphere components to our planet. So let's go to blending options. Let's add an outer and inner glow to simulate our atmosphere. And pick some light bluish colors. All right. And we're going to have to make him pretty large. I'm going to do this as a large dark blue outer glow with a low opacity. Now as you can see this looks pretty ugly right now and this is a mistake many designers make is not not smoothing this out enough. So I'm going to duplicate that layer and next I'm going to try to get rid of this really obvious line between the background and the texture. So we're going to have to use a really light color to do that. And at a very high opacity. So we got 100 for both. And now let's start shrinking it. So move it down a great deal. And there you go. As you can see, there's a much less obvious gap between the texture and its background. All right. Now, obviously, a planet does not look like one huge glowing sphere like this, so we need to add a shadow to it. Now this can be a little bit tricky and tedious. My method about going about it is um, just making another uh, black sphere. Uh, actually I'm going to use a gradient. So I'm going to use the gradient tool and I'm going to give our planet a nice shadow like so all right and here's yet another mistake that designers make you would obviously not have a shadow or have a glow in the shadow so we need to essentially erase all this crap down here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate both of my atmosphere layers. And I'm going to hide them just in case I might need copies of them later. And now I'm going to rasterize these layers so the blending options aren't there anymore. But how I do that is I go to one of the layers. I create a new layer right below it. And I click on the above layer and hit Control E. Now notice that gets rid of the blending options and basically merges everything into one simple layer. All right. And here's where I get rid of it. we go. We got one decent looking planet. The next step would be actually creating the scene in which we will use this planet. So I'm going to make a new canvas uh, with the resolution of this monitor which is 1680 